Hello everyone, it's GIST Designer Mark here, and I'm here to demonstrate to show you how we make these amazingly beautiful earrings using a bead that I've got a great affinity with, and that's the dart bead. Now, many of you know that I, last year I was lucky enough to be invited to one of our seed bead manufacturers in the Czech Republic to put pen to paper and actually design a very own jewellery maker bead. And I came up with the dart bead. So I thought I'd show you a quick demonstration today how to use these in a really nice simple pair of earrings. So for each earring all you'll need are four of your dart beads and then seed beads in two sizes, a size 11O and a size 15O. Now I don't get to work with 15Os very often so this is a bit of a treat for me. The only other item you'll need really are shepherd hooks to finish your earrings off and a needle and thread. So I'm using a tulip needle in a size 12 and an eight pound white fire line. And you probably need about 60 centimeters. So again, you don't need very much at all. So let's make a start. I'll just move these earrings out of the way. I've already made one using this amazing burnt copper mat. So I'm going to make the other one to complete the pair for you. So I'll just bring that up here. So the first thing we have to do is we have to select our four dart beads and as you can see I've gone for this amazing copper colour. And we're going to pick up the following, we're going to pick up an 11 o and the dart bead has three holes. It has one through the base, one through the centre and one through the point. So to start with we're going to be using the base hole. So I've picked up my 11, we're going to thread on a dart and we're going to repeat this a further three times. So one, two, three, and four. And once we've added on those beads, we're going to slide it down. Now you need a tiny little tail because we're actually going to cut that off at the end, so it doesn't need to be very big. And we're going to tie a single knot and pull that nice and tight followed by a double knot. And again, pull nice and tight. So when we have that laying down, again, we've got our little tail, which we will cut off at some point. We have our little diamond of four dart beads. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get away from this knot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do what's called a thread bridge. So I'm going to step up from the knot and I'm going to jump across into the first available hole going through the center of the dart bead. Now I find it easier working anti-clockwise, so I'm just going to flip it over so I'm working away from me. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to fill the gap between these centre points with the following beads, three of our blue 11 o. So we're going to skip the gap into the next and just give it a little wiggle so it forms a nice triangle. Then we're going to pick up another three into the middle of the next dart bead. Again, just give it a wiggle so it makes a nice, neat triangle point. There we go. Let's move that tail out of the way. As I said, that tail will be coming off shortly. Picking up one, two, three, skipping the gap. And then finally, the fourth. So one, two, three, skip the gap. And I've gone through, it doesn't really matter. So we're going to pull that nice and tight. So now we have our four diamond points. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to sew through the diamond on the end. And can you see I'm exiting from the last of the group of three we've just added. And there you can see the hole at the point. Now we're going to fill that gap there with three 11 O's. So one, two, three. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to sew into the point. So it just nicely fills that gap alongside. Then we're going to repeat it again. So we've got the gap. I'm going to sew up through the three and then fill the gap of the next dart. So one, two, three. I'm going to sew into the three. So this just add, adds a bit of strength as well to those, those centre points. So down through. Again, 
fill the gap, one, two, three. Keep turning it round, one, two, three. Then we go up through, down through the two, and then fill the next gap. One, two, three. It's always best just to check all of your beads, whether it's single hole, double hole, triple hole, as in the dark bead, just to make sure that none of the holes are blocked. Because the last thing you want to do is get halfway through your project and you have to stop and start again because you have a, a blocked bead. So it's always worth just spending a couple of minutes before you start your project, just having a little check. Okay, just going up to the last dart now. So one, two, three. Fill the gap. One, two, three. Fill the gap. What I'm going to do is I'm going to sew through all of these remaining beads here. So I'm up at the up at the top end of the dart. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to lay this down, flip it, and I'm going to cut off the tail. Okay, so there we have our first round. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to start now incorporating our 15 O's. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover the point of the dart bead here with seven of my 15s. Three, four, five, six, seven. What I'm going to do, I'm going to go over the point of the dart and take my needle through the next three. So these will lay nice and neatly over the point of the dart bead. And now can you see there's a gap here between these three and the middle point of that first little triangle. I'm just gonna fill these gaps with an 11 O. So I'm going to go into the point And then I'm going to do the same after that. So fill the gap with an 11. And I'm just going to continue that all the way around. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of our 15 O's. Through the three next 11's, which will give us our little point on the top. Then we're going to fill those little gaps with an 11 O, so into the point of that middle triangle of the three. Like so, pull that so it sits in the gap. Next group of seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Across the top of the point. Fill the gaps into the point of the middle three. And then the same. And do our last group of seven. As I said, it's such a treat for me to be able to use 15, uh, 15s in the design. And they're so delicate and very beautiful. So I'm just going to go across. And do our last little 11, so through that middle of that group of three. And then the same in the last. So jump the gap. And we're going to sew through those three. Oh, I've gone too far there. I, want to, I don't want to go through any of those 15s. I'm just going to reverse a little bit. So that's our next round completed. So what I'm going to do, you can imagine that there's a hole through the top of that bead there, through the dark bead. So I'm going to take my needle and I'm just going to sew through the hole because I don't want to have to sew through the 15s around the dart at, the, at this point. And then I'm going to sew through one, two, three, four of my next 11s. You might need to do it in two little groups. So that's one, two, three, four. Because what I'm going to do then is I'm going to fill this gap in between the two 11s that we added in the previous row 
with five of our 15s. So five of our 15s, I'm going to jump the gap through the four. And again, this will make a little triangle. So it's all about odd number triangles in this design. I'm going to sew through the point of the dart bead. I'm going to sew through the four. And I'm going to add five of my 15s to make a little triangle. I'm going to go across the gap, make a little triangle through the point of the dart, through the four, add my five. You seem to start to get into a little rhythm when you're beading in, um, in rounds like this. to make sure on the right side I'm going to sew through the tip of the dart and then do my last group of four like so make sure we don't get caught okay so this is my last group of five And then I'm going to, oops, I'm going to skip the gap and sew through the four. Okay, so that's our next round completed. So we have our four points and our four curves over the darts. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to sew through, and this time, I want to exit the middle of the group of seven of our 15s on the corner. So I'm just going to go up through four, which will then mean that I'm exiting through the middle of that triangle. And then I'm going to fill the space from this corner section to the point of our triangle we've just made. And I'm going to fill the gap with three 15s, three 11s, and three fifteens, so nine beads all together, three, three, and three. And I'm going to skip the gap into the point of that triangle we've just made. Okay, so these beads will sit nice and neatly. So we're just going to repeat that all the way around. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And this time we're going to just jump into the middle of that group of seven on the corner of the dart bead. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Skip the gap. Pull that through. So one, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, into the middle of that corner. I'm just going to repeat one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, into the corner. And because we are using all these odd numbers, that's why we have a middle point that we can sew into, so we get a nice symmetry and uh, uniformity on our design. Okay, so two more to go. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Into the point. And then our last section, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then we're going to go into the middle point, which is just there. Okay, so that was the penultimate round. So as you can see, we're slowly starting to expand our design. So what we're going to do now, we're going to do the final row. So what we're going to do is I'm going to sew from this point that I've just I've gone to that corner 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew through those nine beads I've just added. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill this little gap here, can you see, over the point that we made in the previous rounds with three 11 O's. And I'm going to sew through the nine. You might be able to do it in one go. There we go. So we have a little blue point on the top of our silver. One, two, three. Jump the gap through the nine. And this is why I'm using a size 12 needle because we're because we're using 15 O's and we're doing multiple passes, you will need a slightly finer needle. One, two, three. And if you go back on my videos that I have on my Guest Designer Facebook page, there is actually a little tip on threading smaller needles. So you might want to um, have a little look at that first of all and have a practice at threading your needles. So through the nine. Just flatten it out nicely. One, two, three, through the nine. And obviously you can mix and match your colours if you wanted to. I've just I've stuck with the turquoise blue, which is a beautiful matte finish. And it works really well with the silver and it also works with the copper as well. So it's a really nice little selection of colours. Okay, two to go. So one, two, three. Fill the gap. There's lots of gap filling in this. This is why I really like this design. Okay, so last one, so one, two, three, we're going to sew through the nine, so through the three, and the three, and the three, and what I want to do is go through the middle of the first group of three we've added, so we're sort of at a, at a point at a corner if you like. Okay, so if I just lay that down, you can see now that we've got our eight blue points around the outside, so what we need to do now is we need to make our loop to make our earring. So I'm exiting through the middle of that group of three and I'm going to pick up 10 of my little 15 O's. Okay, and what I'm going to do, I'm exiting this middle uppermost. So I'm going to take the needle round the back and back through. I'm going to flip it over and I'm just going to take my needle all the way through those 15s again just to strengthen it. And again, this is this is why we're using a size 12 needle. So make sure it's nice and secure. And this just adds strength because it's going to have quite a bit of pressure having the shepherd's hook attached to it. So just, just going through twice will just add some strength. And then we're going to go through the blue and the next blue like so. So there's our little loop. And then to finish off, all I'm going to do is I'm going to take my needle up through the middle of that group of three elevens. And I'm going to make a little loop. And I'm going to feed my needle once and twice through. And pull that nice and tight. And the knot disappears. I'm just going to sew through the next group of 15s and the elevens. Just to get away from the knot I've just made, like so. I'm going to lay that down and I'm going to cut off the thread. We finish with that. And then last but not least, simply attach our shepherd's hook. So I've gone for a silver to match the 15 O's. And I'm going to pop that straight onto the little loop on the shepherd's hook. And then get its partner which I made earlier and there we have the amazing dart bead earrings. So even though they've got quite a lot of beads in they're still quite lightweight so I've got one in the copper, I've got a pair in the gold and turquoise and I've also got the blue and red and gold which always reminds me of a, of a circus tent, they're quite fun aren't they? So they're your dart bead earrings from start to finish. I hope you enjoyed the demonstration and um, I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.